Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I've recently finished a big illustration project that I've produced a lot of new artwork for and I thought it might be fun to share a little bit about it and show you the individual pieces. So uh, all of the illustrations were for information boards are actually three different information boards about local protected areas here uh, in Germany where I live and they show a variety of wildlife and plants and then a smaller information board shows local orchids like the one you can see here and I've already shown a little bit of uh, the studies for this project in my recent sketchbook tours. So if some of these might look familiar, then this, that's because I did a lot of studies for this project, or at least I tried to do this in my sketchbook before I embarked on painting the finished illustration. And I really like to, to work this way when I have the opportunity and the time to do so, because it's so nice to um, to really study your subject to learn more about the different species and uh, draw them from different sides and often these sketchbook phases these study sheets were the really enjoyable part of of the process when i got to play around a little bit and uh yeah i learned a lot about the different habitats which i i will show you the paintings in their um individual groups so uh, one habitat was a calcareous grassland. Then I, um, there were species that live in old growth forest, and the the third habitat was is a stream valley. So um, a lot of different species, and um, yeah, it was really really interesting to um, research all these species, to select them, and then to put them together in these information boards. And this project took several months to complete. And um, yeah, since it's February now, you will notice that I painted all of these during autumn and winter. So um, I've, I've visited the areas before and I'm familiar with some of the, bir the birds and butterflies and the plant species. But, but actually most of, of the illustrations were done with the help of reference images because during winter you can't just go out and sketch all these species from life can you and um, yeah I, but w one thing that sort of came up during my work on this project is that I really would like to go back to some of the areas in summer and actually find and sketch some of of the species that I illustrated already um, yeah to sketch some of them from life uh, especially the orchids and the butterflies and so that's one of my big plans for 2022 that uh, yeah really came out of this this big project that I finished over the course of the winter yeah you've already seen me share a lot of orchid paintings and sketches recently so this is one of the bee orchids that I painted for this project and I think I painted on the back of this so um at one point during this project I ran out of of the paper that I needed for this so I had to paint on a few um, I usually don't do this, but uh, this time it worked out. And so this is another uh, local orchid. So this batch of paintings is all about species that grow or live on these uh, calcareous grasslands. And these are essentially meadows that don't have as much nutrients and they're often quite dry and sunny. And you actually, um, to to keep these from uh, being grown over by other plants you need to take care of them and actually put um, yeah, grazing animals on them like goats or sheep are often on there in the summer and this is really important so that you don't have like uh, too many trees or brushes growing in these areas so that the, the these really delicate small plants really get enough light for growing on there so this is um a spring plant. I always forget all the English names, please forgive me about this, but you can find all of these on my blog and in my portfolio I list all of the English and German names. I think this is a cowslip and this is one of the orchids. And then we have one of the species there are sand lizards. They are really uh, quite common around here, but not as common as they used to be. But still, uh, I really had a lot of fun painting this one with all of the textures and um, the scales. Really quite cool animals. Then there's a bunch of birds. This is a chiff chaff, I believe. 
Skylark. And this is a red back trike. These are actually quite cool birds. I saw them a lot in, in the last year. They like to sit on these um, elevated positions so that they have an overview. Here's a gold hammer. I'm not sure this is a pretty um, intense yellow that I painted here. They actually have this quite intense yellow, but I think I subdued it a bit when I scanned this image. So this is almost like neon looking. And then we have these different species of butterflies. So these are just some of the many, many species that you can uh, find on, on these grasslands in these areas. And I'm really looking forward to see more of them. Uh, last year I, I sort of started to reacquaint myself a little bit with all of the different species that are there. And um, yeah, it, it was really awesome to be able to paint all of them. But this is just a very small selection and I'm really looking forward to hopefully see more of these this year. Yeah, so this is the grassland and let's see a few more. So the next batch is, I believe this is the old growth forest and we have a few of those old growth forests here that were used a couple of hundred years ago for, um, you know, people were um, using them for growing wood or for um, feeding their, their animals. And these days they are mostly conservation areas, protected areas. And there is there are many, many different species like these different bats. These are just two of the local bats that live in these forests. And um, there are actually a lot of like decaying and these gnarly trees that are really, I think I have even, yeah, I even painted one of these for, um, for the information board. So there are decaying trees in different stages that actually are these sort of micro habitats for a lot of species like beetles. And you will see this in a minute. So we will continue with these mammals first, but there are, there's um, a vast variety of insects and of birds that are really um, dependent on, on these decaying trees to be left in the forest. So it's, it's such an unfortunate trend for people wanting to have sort of a tidy forest these days and uh, often people can't understand why you need to leave the old wood, the decaying trees actually on the ground so that they can form these sort of habitats for other species. Here we have an European wildcat. Um, I think I've only seen one once or twice in my life and <laughs> I've grown up in in the forest so it's they all they live there, but you never see them because they're very, very shy. And um, the best chance at seeing a wildcat is actually if you go to a sanctuary. So uh, a lot of fun to paint these. Then we have this little dormouse, which is quite large, this painting actually. And on to the birds. So there are a lot of woodpeckers. I wonder if I have, yeah. I have different kinds of woodpeckers for this habitat here. So this is a black woodpecker, then um, I think this is a gray-headed woodpecker in English and just a um, smaller kind. I, let me see if I can... Yeah, this is called a middle spotted woodpecker. And as always, I enjoy painting birds really a lot. Black stork also a very shy animal and one bird that you can't miss if you uh, go hiking or live in the, this part of the country. This is a uh, common raven and they are really everywhere here in these forests and uh, sometimes you only hear them but quite often you also can see them. Really cool, really cool birds. Here are just two of the beetles that are um, common here and uh, both of these are um, really dependent on as I said on these decaying tree parts and stuff like that. 
really love stag beetles. They look so alien and so interesting. So I also really enjoyed painting these, uh, also these highlights here. Um, I did those with um, colored pencil. And we, here we have a few plants and fungi that live in this part of the, the habitat. So this is um, a twig of a European elder, quite a beautiful tree. Sundew, then a different version of my sundew that I didn't really like at all. <laughs> and I think it was due to the paper. Um, so I didn't use one kind of paper throughout this project, which is also really non-advisable because you have to change your painting style um, all of the time. So this is cold press paper, this is hot press paper, and you can really see the difference here. And this is a... Uh, I'm actually not sure what this should be called in English. I'm sure I have noted the Latin name, but it's one of these uh, fungi that grow on trees and actually help with the, with the decay rate. And the next habitat is a river valley. And for this I did quite a few paintings and I really enjoyed working on this um, fire salamander. Then we have an alpine newt, and actually I've never seen one of these. So I've seen a few, um, few of these fire salamanders, but I've never seen a newt before. So these two obviously need a bit of water to survive. So they can often be found in these sort of moist and dark areas of the forest or, well, yeah, near rivers anyway. So you have to imagine this river valley in, um, yeah, it's quite a, not a very steep valley. And then the river goes through there, meandering through this kind of um, wet meadow. And you still have a lot of um, butterflies there. For example, this one and also this one. And then there are a lot of uh, dragonflies and damselflies. And this was another part that I didn't expect to be so, um, so nice to illustrate because it was actually really relaxing. I thought this might be a nightmare. These really delicate um, wings and the legs, but it was so relaxing, I thought. I did quite a lot of them. Let's put them all into put them all here next to each other. So um, yeah, I even think uh, maybe I, I even did one more or two more. Maybe these were just my um, the sketches that I did, but it was so nice to um, learn more about all of these different um, dragonfly and damselfly species. Really, really interesting. And also they are so beautiful. Then there are a few local fish species in the river. I think I only did one or two of them for the illustration board. And of course, local birds. This is a dipper. They always live near or uh, yeah, near the water, near streams. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten most of the English names for these ones. But this one, you know, it's a kingfisher. So I've actually seen one of these recently in the places where he's supposed to, um, where he's supposed to live. So, And I mean, if you look at these, they're really quite similar looking birds. <laughs> and if you don't know them very well, or if you aren't an on ornithologist, I think you'll have at least I have problems when I have to identify them when they're just flying by. So it was really interesting for me to uh, sort of uh, look at these different types of um, learn more about these individual uh, features. But I think I'm a long way from being able to identify these guys really well in the field. Uh, another woodpecker, which is a really small one this time. I have yet to see one of those in the wild. And this is one of the wagtail species, also really beautiful. I recently saw one of them too. 
with uh, the yellow belly. Really, really beautiful birds. And here are some of the plant species that grow in this kind of forest. So this always grows near water. This is a small um, sort of violet that grows uh, more in the foresty areas. Here's a willow branch. And two more plants that grow uh, near or in the water, actually. Very interesting. I shall look out for these. Uh, next year and I hope I can see some of them in bloom. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you can find all of these uh, illustrations in my portfolio on my website. I uh, always include links for all of these things. So if you want to learn the specific English names for all of these species that I showed here and didn't know the names for, then uh, just take a look at my uh, portfolio. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, it was a very big project for me. It, uh, you know, it's been several months and just seeing this huge amount of work now uh, is really, really uh, sort of satisfying in a way. And I'm really proud of the result too. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of um, portfolio show. <laughs> this is not really like a sketchbook too because these are not sketchbook works but uh, yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video. So you know the drill leave me a like or a comment uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video if you want to share it with another person and if you want to support my work then uh, consider taking one of my classes. This is one way you can help me uh, right now to do more projects like this and to make these videos uh, possible. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye!